Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Brian Main, who is in the lovely uh, Isle of Wight in the UK. How are you doing, Brian? I'm um, doing really good. Great to connect with you, John. Yeah, absolutely. And Brian's a global speaker on personal development, seminar leader, author of four books on personal development and the creator of the empowerment techniques, goal mapping, life mapping, action mapping and self mapping. And have worked with organizations like Microsoft, IBM, Disney and a whole host of others. And what we're going to talk about today is goal mapping. Uh, so um, let's get right to let, let's go back to the start, Brian. And uh, Tell me a little bit about how you came up with the goal mapping concept and idea in the first place and why you did. Uh, it's, I'll make the story as quick as possible. Uh, but I, I was in a tough situation. My life changed radically. I, I grew up in a traveling funfair circus family. I moved around constantly as a child and related to two of the oldest a fun fair and circus families in the UK. I was born into that life. I left school just before 13, which is normal for traveling gypsy children. Uh, I had no qualifications, never learned to read and write. And I worked for my father's fun fair business, which traveled around the country, but also came here to where I still live, the Isle of Wight. And we would open up the uh, amusements for the tourist industry. And that business really thrived uh, for many years. And so from 13 onwards, I worked full time for my father. I become one of the youngest licensees in England. In fact, I was the youngest licensee ever. Uh, when I was granted a liquor and entertainment license at age 18, opened a disco again for the tourist industry. I did really well with all of that. I was very wealthy, very young, but I, I obviously had quite an unusual life, early uh, sales and entrepreneur career. Mm -hmm. And then uh, things changed from mid age 29 when tourism ended on the Isle of Wight because uh, affordable airfare prices come down in the late 1980s and English people started taking their main summer holiday in the Mediterranean uh, rather than in England. And so here on the Isle of Wight, we saw tourism ending. Uh, my family business, my father's family business also ended. And so at age 29, I was in a lot of debt, million pounds of debt, uh, no qualifications. My home had been repossessed. It was a really terrible situation. And uh, because of not being able to read and write at age 29, no qualifications, never had a proper job. Uh, there was not so many options open to me. I didn't know what I would do. Uh, but some friends offered me a position in their direct sales team uh, mm. that they would started up. And they had about 20, 30 people in the team. And they asked if I would join them. And uh, I did. It, it, I wasn't successful in my sales at first, but it became the greatest uh, turning and blessing in my life because in joining the sales team, it started me on a new career path. And in particular, it introduced me to the concept of personal development. Right. And I used personal development, and in particular, the science of positive thinking uh, to help myself develop myself as a person and obviously uh, advance my career. In particular, what I focused on with the goal setting and the positive thinking was overcoming my learning challenges and teaching myself to read well. And once I learned to read, uh, the thing I wanted to read more and more of was personal development right. and uh, motivational psychology. And I use it in every area of my life. I use it in my sales life and my sales figures rose from the lowest in the team to the highest. And I use it in a personal life and other areas and gradually and my life transformed. And as my life changed, a lot of other people around me <clears throat> wanted to know how I'd achieve those changes. 
And so that led me into making presentations. And uh, the thing that I was really interested in right from the beginning of my personal development journey in 1993 was uh, what are the best techniques? You know, a lot of people know personal development, but they yeah. don't always use it. It's a book that sits on their bookshelf somewhere. If you have some great tools and techniques that help you put it into practice, it makes all the difference. So yeah. I, I wanted to learn techniques of goal setting, self-motivation, positive thinking, personal responsibility. And uh, it, it was really that search for good techniques that led me into the goal mapping system. Yeah, no, that's a great story. Uh, fantastic story. And, and you know, having grown up in Ireland myself, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the types of traveling, uh, traveling carnival circuses or whatever it is. Uh, so whereabouts uh, in Ireland did you go? Uh, Dub Dublin, Dublin. I've just come back from Dublin. I've been running a workshop there. Uh, oh, fantastic. Just, just like, uh, like two, three weeks ago now. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's One, wonderful city. Really yeah. lovely people. But but I remember, and in fact, even uh, in school, it used to be one of the most exciting parts of the year when the circus used to come across the road from us in this green space. I think it was Duffy's or one of those. I can't remember. Uh, but it used to be really exciting when they come and set up their tents. But one of the one of the interesting things that you mentioned, um, Brian, that I want to focus in on is that, and I and I think people underestimate this sometimes, is that you were able to get a job in sales, right? I mean, somebody offered you a job in sales and people often look down their noses at sales jobs or they think they're, you know, terrible or they think they're, you know, because popular culture has has uh, 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 projected them that way and all of that. However, I mean, we see it differently. We see sales as one of the most wonderful things you can do in helping people. But it is an amazing thing is that you were able to go into sales and sales was the place that gave you your first foothold. Yeah, okay. So I was one of those people that looked down on sales. I've got to be honest. You know, I, I took the sales job out of desperation, not out of desire. However, my view of sales now is completely the opposite. And uh, I think maybe it was a great blessing for me that I didn't sell anything at first because it made me think much deeper about the nature of sales and, 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 and what is the actual uh, process and what are you doing? And it, it's really about helping people I had a picture in my mind that it was about manipulating people. Sales is about getting people to, to buy something they really don't want. And if you're a really smart salesperson, you trick them into buying something. That was the picture I had in my head of sales. And of course, uh, that picture of what I thought a salesperson was also become a great limitation to me because uh, inherently I felt a resistance to it. The more that I learned personal development, the more I realized the true nature of sales where you're helping people. And really everything in life is a sell in one way or another. Yeah. You know, the biggest sales pitch any guy's probably going to make in life is uh, asking their girlfriend to marry them. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty big sales yeah, yeah. pitch. Uh, but there are, you know, constantly sales. And, I didn't have children when I started out in my sales career, but now I have uh, two lovely daughters and uh, my oldest is 19 and my youngest is 15. They're constantly selling me. They're constantly, <laughs> they're constantly pitching me yeah. on, uh, you know, uh, what it is that they think is a good idea and where we should go and what we should do and, and all of those things. So I think it just depends on your mindset and how you're seeing sales. And it is unfortunate that some people have a, a negative picture of what it's about. And uh, even some salespeople, I think, when they're first yeah. starting out, a little bit unsure about themselves like I was. When, when the picture changed in my mind about what I was really doing and how I was helping people, that's uh, when I started to see my success really escalate. 
Yeah, and then then and, and so you you started getting into personal development and read books, and I think you know a lot of people start on that process, and I think sometimes those books kind of sit on the shelf, or now they sit in your virtually in your Kindle or whatever, as a reminder of what you haven't done, as opposed to what you have done. <laughs> yeah. And so, what what made you actually take? the decision take the step to actually implement these things as opposed to you know kind of buy the book flick through the first few chapters and then just give it up and buy another one a couple of months later in the early days it was uh, desperation no doubt about it so uh, we are all born with two types of motivation uh, one type of motivation move away from pain is uh, one motivation we are born with Another motivation we are born with is move towards pleasure. And these two aspects of motivation, pain and pleasure, are inherent in us. And sometimes what motivates us in life is to move out of pain. And for me, when I first got into sales, I was in a million pound of debt. I was homeless. I had been unemployed before I started with sales. My parents were 65. It was their family business that crashed. And so my mother and father's home was going to be repossessed, like mine had been repossessed. And I was determined at 65, they wouldn't lose their home. And so it was a sort of do or die moment. You know, I just knew that there aren't many options open to me. I've got to really make this work. And so when I went to the personal development workshop and they laid out the psychology of sales success and how there is a science to positive thinking and goal setting. And if you understand it, you can use it to great effect. And that just rung the bell for me. And so I was in a situation where I was prepared to suspend all of my suspicion and, uh, I was I was cynical, uh, really. I didn't believe personal development was c- going to help me. I thought that was new age nonsense, you know, some uh, psycho battle stuff. Uh, but the guy that run the training program was really cool. He made it really simple. It made a lot of sense. And I suspended my disbelief and I said, OK, I'm going to going to throw myself at this for one year and uh, we're going to measure the results and we're going to see what it can achieve. And then, although it it took me 10 years to pay back my million pound debt, but within 18 months, I'd made such great progress that I knew this is a major turning point in my life. And there was also then a turn in the motivation because within 18 months, I had money coming in. I'd structured a deal to pay off the debt. I could see the path and the future. And a different motivation then become the dominant pull rather than a push. And and that was to make a difference. So uh, sometimes pain motivation, and for me, the pain was, oh, my God, I've got to do something for my parents and myself. But then pleasure motivation, because we don't want to spend our life being motivated by pain. Yeah. Uh, that that creates a very sort of ego driven goal setting mentality uh, that that's not always good for us. Pleasure motivation is more about having a purpose, and I felt even to this day I feel uh, enormously grateful to the man, the trainer that introduced me to personal development, and he sadly died quite young. I had him as my coach for four or five years and he died young. And I decided, well, I'm going to teach person development and I'm going to help people in the way that he helped me. And I'm going to help as many people as I can. And so that become a very much a a pleasure forward looking motivation. How much can I achieve while I'm, uh, uh, while I'm here? So in the early days, definitely it was pain motivation. Right. Uh, but then it, it transformed as I gradually moved out of pain, felt some financial security. You could see, you know, here's my uh, income for the year ahead and into them much more pleasure-based motivation. Right. 
Um, okay, so then you, I mean, over time, obviously took time, but you eventually you developed your goal, uh, your goal mapping system. Uh, do you want to kind of talk us through what the what the elements of that are? Yeah, so I had a really tough time at school, uh, partly because of my gypsy lifestyle. I was only in a school for two or three months. We were moved to a, a new location. I'd be in a new school, in a new school, and and not much school. So only about five months school each year, divided between different schools. Never sat an exam in my life. And then when I uh, I never learned to read and write until I was 30 years old. And it was personal development that helped me learn to read and write. And as my life started to improve, the question that kept coming to my mind was, why are we not teaching simple, positive thinking and goal setting in our schools, right. in state education to our children as standard? And I realized, well, goal setting is a science. There is a right way and a wrong way. And if someone, especially a young child, is not setting the goal in the right way, uh, the chances are they won't achieve the goal. And that leads them into then some false belief that they're not capable. And really, they probably could do it if they set the goal in the right way. And so I focused all of my reading and all of my spare time and my research into what is the absolute most powerful way to set goals. And it led me into this flash of insight, which has become goal mapping. And in essence, uh, the thing that makes goal mapping unique and powerful, and the reason why it's now reached more than 5 million people around the world, wow. Wow. is uh, the balanced combination of words and pictures. Uh, we have two sides to our brain, left hemisphere, right hemisphere. Left side of the brain generally is the logical brain, conscious mind, and the left brain is thinking in words. The right brain, creative mind, is thinking mostly in pictures or imagery. Right. And we absolutely need to engage both sides of the brain, whole brain, when we're setting goals. So we need to set the goals in both words for the left brain conscious mind, but also pictures, right brain, creative mind. And it's the right brain creative mind that also connects with our subconscious mind, mm -hmm. which works like our own personal autopilot and, and moves us towards the achievement of the goal. And the strange thing is, is uh, uh, this uh, goal mapping system came to me like a flash of insight, driving my car late at night through London uh, after thinking about this question intensely for many, many months. And uh, I saw the whole of the goal map complete, and I can share my screen and show an image. Yeah, please do. Uh, but, but here's the strange uh, thing, John. The more research I did, and, and much of the research was actually after I started teaching it, uh, but, but actually what I saw in the research was that uh, this system of using words and pictures to uh, set your goals is ancient. It's been around for thousands of years in different cultures around the world. Uh, they have slightly different names for it. So uh, um, uh, uh, um, affirmation with the words, visualization with right. the pictures. Or in India, uh, they will say uh, a mantra with the words, a chant, and a yantra uh, with the pictures. You also find it in Buddhism, in other cultures. So in a goal map, we've got this combination of words and pictures, and right in the very center, uh, we've got a main goal. And then mm -hmm. on either side of the main goal, we have more goals. Now, in a goal map, all of the goals can be from different areas of your life, or they can all be focused on one area, such as uh, sales success. Mm -hmm. And then at the top of the map is why you want the goal. So what are your main motivating reasons? And then a timeline. So we have a start date and an achievement date. 
And then we have a, a simple action plan. So what are the things you need to do to move along your path towards the achievement of your goals? And then the final step is who? Who's going to be involved? Is it just you? Are there other people? If the who is you, then you state in words and pictures the way of being. So being focused, being motivated, mm -hmm. being inspired. Sometimes the who is another person. It's going to be someone teaching you something or coaching you. If it's a personal goal map, maybe it's friends and family supporting you. Or if it's uh, more of a work goal map, perhaps it's your uh, manager or mentor or someone that's working with you. But by going through these seven steps, words and pictures, it helps to stimulate both sides of the brain, left brain, right brain. Uh, we all have billions of brain cells. 100 billion is the estimate. Wow. And by setting goals, it helps us to join the brain cells together. All of our 100 billion brain cells are separated by a small gap, synaptic gap, it's called. Uh, but if we think of positive thoughts, it helps us to join the brain cells together. We also release a feel-good chemical, serotonin, which gives us a feeling of motivation. The more connections we make, by setting goals, the more that helps us to activate uh, both sides of our brain and uh, grow our belief. It gives us those aha yeah. moments as we join the brain cells together. And by using both our right brain, having a good vision of the future, and our left brain to form a, a strategy or a plan, it simply helps us to be at our best. And a goal yeah. mapping does this in a really effective way because of this use of words and pictures. If you look at all the goal setting books, John, before the year 2000, they yeah. will only talk about writing your goals. Yeah. yeah. And they will say, write your goals again, 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 again. And if you look at the goal setting books after the year 2000, they talk about dream boards and vision boards. Uh, but they don't say anything about writing the goals. Right. And the reality is we need both. We need to write the words as well as have the pictures because we want to activate both sides of the brain. And in modern life, with all of the fast changes we have, it's more important than ever to live your life uh, in a whole brain game yeah so we want to have a vision of the future as well as being able to work out the plan of how we get there yeah and and what i like about the this brian is at the the very uh, at the very top is you put the whys in and i think that is where a lot of people fall down you can sort of start self-development you can have these goals or whatever but if you don't figure out the why because the why is going to be the real driver for you at the end and i think a lot of people haven't figured out their their why why they're doing what they're doing today and it doesn't have to be grandiose as you had it there uh, you know you didn't have it grandiose there were simple goals um simple reasons why and i think that's so incredibly important yeah the why is the power and uh, many years ago i was working with one of the top comms companies in england in fact that they were a big global communications company and i had their top team and their top salesperson on the program and we were talking about the difference between goal setting and the big why a purpose and uh, what he said to me has stayed in my mind for years and i use it as a story in, in much of my training uh, which is that when you join an organization, very often the organization, the, the sales team that you join, for example, they, they tell you the goal. So yep. they will tell you, here's the target we expect you to achieve in return for your, uh, your money and, and the car and these things that are included in your package. No one tells you your why. You need to find that for yourself. 
And uh, with this top sales guy I was working with, he was very clear on his why, which was giving his children and his family at the best start that he could in life. Right. And sales was in his mind the best vehicle for him to achieve that why. And I think when the why is strong, it helps us to continue through the tough times when we don't feel like things are flowing our way. Yeah. But if we lose sight of the why, well, it just always feels like it's a really tough day. And it's uh, during those tough periods that people sometimes give up. Mm -hmm. So a goal map, and uh, I've got my goal maps uh, right here in my, uh, in my folder. So uh, I, have, I always have more than one map on the go at any one right. time. Uh, so this is my uh, health and well-being map. And then I've got uh, uh, personal maps about relationship. Uh, this is my business goal map. And you can see it's right. next door to my to-do list here because you can drill down into detail. It's not just about having a goal. It's also the steps and the action plan you need to follow in order to achieve the goal. Uh, mm -hmm. But it really helps me stay connected to why I choose uh, to continue on my path, pay the price. In any goal we set, there's going to be a price to pay. Yep. Time and effort and self-belief and some sacrifice. But if you're clear on the why, you're going to follow through. Lose sight of the why, and whether it's sales or anything yeah. else, you drop out. Yeah, no, 100%. That's why I think it, the, the why is just so incredibly important. And I think it's fantastic that the, the way you've laid this out. Uh, listen, all of Brian's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, Brian, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. And so I work on an international basis. Um, I have uh, high level clients such as Microsoft, Siemens, Disney, Coca-Cola, Amazon recently contacted me, one of the uh, senior execs here in England. They want to do a uh, goal mapping with Amazon. Uh, but I'm also working with general public. I run a regular monthly workshops and evening masterclasses. And we have a lot of people as uh, salespeople, therapists, coaches, trainers that choose to also teach the goal mapping system. We have a certification program. And uh, you can test out goal mapping for yourself, have your own experience, create your own map for absolutely free. Uh, you can go to goalmapping.com and you can download the free printable paper templates if you want to draw your map on paper. Uh, but as a professional, I really recommend that you use the online software. And there is a free level of the software. You can watch an hour of uh, the goal mapping workshop presented by me. And you can create a free goal map and you can update it, change it, and do a lot of things. And uh, we make all of that freely available so people can try it. And if they like it and they want to watch more video and do more maps, and then they can upgrade to one of our premium levels. Fantastic. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Brian. Uh, this My has been pleasure. so interesting. I would really encourage people to go check it out. Go check it out. To do the free, go online, um, put a put a go map together for yourself, and and see what difference it makes. Uh, so try it out. I really recommend it. Again, thank you, Brian. Thank you all for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Pleasure to be with you.